Curse Necropolis. Rewind. Curse Necropolis, Rio, session nine. Right, so last time we focused solely uh, on a flashback, uh, which was set uh, in a time period long gone during the Roman Empire's uh, dominion, I guess, of uh, their province of Britannia. We, we were watching Sabek and Khufu there, uh, sent to ostensibly track down uh, relics, which they had managed to do uh, to great success. And uh, for whatever reason, we don't exactly know, um, but maybe we'll find out at some point in the future, but there were a lot of them to be gathered, even though it's a fairly far away province from what used to be Irem's fear of influence, there's a fair number of relics there. Of course, not all of them are crafted uh, or were crafted in Irem um, because regular people can actually create relics, even though it's quite rare. But there were a lot of them there. So Sabek and Khufu had been sent there to basically harvest them as, as Rome expanded into Britannia. And uh, we encountered some uh, disturbing creatures, uh, basically um, uh, a, a whole war band uh, of, of lifeless creatures uh, with a capital L, uh, signifying the, the necromantic horrors, the necromantic um, sort of antagonists slash minions sometimes of the Arisen. And also something else, the, there were, we think, at least two Shuang Sen there who are the sort of dark reflection of the arts that created the mummies. They function along the same sort of baseline logic, but they were not the holy entombed dead of Irem at all. Um, they, they have a, a different uh, reason for being. And they are wholly not uh, <laughs> of the judges. They are, in fact, uh, the enemy of the Arisen uh, to the greatest possible extent. And uh, Sobek was sent into a death cycle as a result of the assault of these uh, lifeless creatures. And uh, we saw our first glimpse of uh, Neter Kertet, as far as the mummies are concerned, when they when they die, and instead of descending to the underworld, they are uh, following the path through the twilight to their bodies in in the physical world to be uh, resurrected almost immediately after having been uh, killed, slain, uh, because the rite of return. Is, is not easily defeated by mere sword and claw. So we eventually recovered uh, two relics at slightly different times. Uh, the hand of the wall breaker, which was taken to Rome as, as was the thus far unnamed relic uh, contained in a watertight golden box uh, that was in a, in a shoddy, stone tomb that was buried in a swamp, basically a, a wet stone flooded tomb uh, containing uh, certain warning signs uh, never to open uh, the golden box inside which the relic resides. And uh, taking heed of these warnings, Kufu and Sabek did not open the box at all and uh, the relic along with others as as time went on were taken back to Rome uh, which is seen or was seen at the time uh, by several arisen around the Roman provinces as the new Irem, Irem reborn uh, through mortal efforts and um, uh, Khufu we know already at the time harbored certain doubts about this fact. Uh, he, he was not really on board with that at the time, but um, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll no doubt discuss these things uh, more because 
mummies by sort of design almost, uh, by actual occult design, sort of gravitate towards centers of power. And as Rome was one, there are others in the modern day as well. One of which is in fact Rio de Janeiro, which we now return to in the year 2000. No, uh, 2016, in fact. Uh, January 3rd, uh, sorry, uh, February 3rd. I, As I said before, I don't exactly recall the exact dates, if I even mentioned the exact dates, aside from like early February. So we're, gonna, we're just going to uh, have it be um, Jan- uh, February 3rd now, having dealt with the Church of the Feathered Serpent, or rather the Church of Our Lady of the Feathered Serpent, and um, having gotten Ape Medes back. Yes, John? I was going to say, I know session four took place on the 3rd of February. Ah, okay. So we're, yeah, in that case, uh, we're we're going to be, it's a little bit timey-wimey uh, because we haven't really talked in exact terms and we had a little bit of downtime there. Let me actually refer to, because I'm just like trying to pick between four and, four and 5th of February, but let me check my notes. Hmm. Okay, so session three was the solo session for Khufu, wasn't it? Mm. And then we started with the with the Apeb Medes case. Um, right. Okay, that was the third. Then we waited until the next day to yep. go there. So we are at the tail end of the fourth of February. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Okay, good. So that is established. So yeah, fourth uh, of February, two thousand sixteen. Uh, you had some things on your to do list, and we are in that, in fact, free to pursue uh, these as we as we want. So, basically, over to you. You've successfully completed your uh, designs as far as the incident. Uh, of the past day and a half goes. Uh, Apeb Medes' body has been returned to his cult, the Parliament of Patriots, uh, by Sakmist, uh, the the Arisen who masquerades as Shango, the uh, Prince of Storms. And... Uh, let's see. Ibe Sheta was with you in, in this, and... Um, Yeah, yeah. Basically, you've you've sort of tied up all the loose ends, aside from the fact that w- whatever this church business was about, like how how did they have a greater Amkat there? Like who who's doing all this? That's still a mystery. The Amkat still exists, but um, for now we've sort of dealt with the immediate business. We have Apemedes back, and. Uh, sort of the immediate action has been resolved. So you're free to yeah, pursue whatever you wish. Is there anything so Sobek you? particularly wants to do? Um, I, Sobek, would like to check in with my guild master. Um, but it has been somewhat of a difficult past few weeks <laughs> so i may spend some time doing a bit of uh, praying in our shrine is that the right part i'm thinking of? uh temple. temple you have an actual temple in your temple, tomb yeah. complex to restore some of myself before i set up, before i start to negotiate with my guild members uh, okay well how about this for a suggestion I, i'm i'm pr- i'm i'm good I, I don't need to do any particular praying myself now, um, obviously, we know that uh, Khufu wanted to go and rescue Gustavo de Souza, our driver who was imprisoned by the urban mm-hmm. pacification police. Now, obviously, I'm not going to just like storm in there and like bust him out like without having the the sage advice and help of mm-hmm. Sobek. So, how about whilst um, Sobek's like uh, praying and centering himself in the temple? 
I'm basically going to spend that time just sort of like because we know roughly like where he's being held. Mm-hmm. I'm going to spend that time just sort of like walking around the area and like scoping out the place effectively. Mm-hmm. So sort of in preparation for, but I won't actually do anything until Sobek's yeah. finished his um his uh, prayers and his ablutions. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that uh, that experience in the astral forest was quite taxing on me. I can imagine. That MCAT will have to deal with. Well, I'm going to assume. I mean, obviously, correct me if I'm wrong, Johanna. So that obviously we know that like the MCAT can only like manifest effectively for like a, a limited amount of time mm. um i'm going to assume that the like the local newspapers etc haven't been filled with tales of some like giant like feathered serpent like going like mental in rio so i'm assuming for right or wrong that like the beast's probably spent the majority of its strength in its initial appearance and has like discorporated in some way so Whilst we are, you're, you're absolutely right, brother. We are going to have to deal with it at some point. I, I do not believe it's like a pressing sort of urgent need because I, I don't believe the the set of circumstances that led to it materialising are likely to happen all that often. It's like a very specific set of circumstances that led to that occurring. Yeah, I have. I, however, believe that. Those set of circumstances may repeat. Maybe not necessarily in the same way, exactly, but the result. Well, I, I think at some point we we definitely need to have a a conversation with the with the surviving members of that church. But uh, I, I do not believe it's a, a pressing need. So I think you have time to. You have time to centre yourself and regather your your strength for the the ordeals that will surely face us ahead. I shall. Very well. Right. And whilst you do that in our temple, I'm going to I'm going to scout out the area where our loyal servant is being held in in preparation for releasing him. <laughs> right. So our guest. Yeah. Uh, Gustavo is being held in a sort of penitentiary complex uh, quite the distance away from like downtown Rio. It's not that difficult to find. It's it's not that complex. Uh, it's a it's a series of uh, nine buildings or, and there's like the associated area as well, the fences, the watch posts and all that. Um, but yeah, you've, you can prowl around, uh, as much as you like, uh, you, you know, the, uh, the, the fences, the barbed wire on top and, uh, it doesn't, it's not like a super max prison by any okay. means. It's, they didn't throw him there cause he's, um, it, apparently at least <laughs> it, it wasn't on extremely serious charges. So yeah they they put him in what amounts to more or less like a regular prison so yeah you've located the area uh, of this particular penitentiary and you you can see the prisoners in the exercise yard in shifts uh like sort of coming there uh, and uh it, yeah you you can gather your intel yeah, what I'd also like to do while I'm there is, I'm assuming, because obviously p- people die in prisons, mm-hmm. I'm assuming there's some sort of prison morgue or the equivalent to like yeah. hold bodies until they're shipped out to wherever they're going. So I'll try and locate that, because at the minute the sort of idea I have in my mind is if we need a distraction would be to like raise up one of the people in the morgue, mm-hmm. basically turn them loose, and in the chaos that's going on, Whilst everyone's distracted by this, like previously believed dead mm-hmm. um, inmates are romping through, like killing people, we can then go in under cover of that chaos, 
get the mm-hmm. Sousa out, and hopefully the eyes will be elsewhere. Effectively, mm-hmm. it's sort of what I'm thinking. But um, yeah. as I say, I'm not going to take any actual action until I've had a chance to talk to Sobek right. about it. Yeah. Okay. Well, give me a. Um... Uh, wits investigation to sort of figure out the the layout of the place okay. for your purposes specifically. The location of the morgue and all that. Like Three successes. Nice. Okay, so you you know where the morgue is, and um, it's one of the you figure out like one of the buildings in the area is a storage space, and part of that is the morgue. Uh, the sort of cold storage area uh, is next to the morgue, which is also a cold storage area. Okay. And um, you you figured this out. You sort of know the route now. It's as far as these complexes go. It seems to be fairly well organized, and there are. It looks like the movement is quite restricted. So there's like clear flows of movement. Uh, so there you you can only think uh, like. There must be quite the specific route you need to take inside the buildings because they are connected uh, between buildings by uh, these walkways, which are also fenced, so that you you can't go from building A to building C uh, other than through this. Like it's it's fenced in from wall to wall, and you can only go through that corridor and um, you you think like you know from the outside sort of where you need to be but then you'll need to figure out inside like which doors to take there so that you end up in the correct corridor that leads to where you want to go well my my current plan that i'm sort of formulating in my mind is like say some yeah. raise one of the undead to like cause mm-hmm. a distraction yep. um then basically sort of swim through the soil and like up into yep. the, the the cell that's holding that's me. that's a that's a vastly quicker option uh, <laughs> uh, and like, then my plan is pretty much like armor up the Sousa are under one arm smash my way out through the wall mm-hmm. whilst everyone's like oh we're under attack from some like cannibal like undead because mm-hmm. yep, um, what i'll be trying to do is while i'm looking around as well i'll be trying to like because i presume the these urban pacification police they wear like a distinctive uniform of some kind uh yeah they do have their own uh sort of I uh, suppose build a color scheme, their own uniform. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And of course, the 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 plates as well. Like the on the bulletproof vest, like they have their own like your urban pacification police, like the the abbreviation. So yeah, because basically my plan is when I raise this undead thing, obviously if I don't give them instructions, they just like attack anything living that's nearby. Yeah. So if they've got a distinctive logo, my plan will be when I raise it up, say like only attack people bearing this logo, like this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then sort of set it loose, so that my thought being that it's a bit harsh on the uh, the old people who are like probably just doing their job for like the open pacification police. However, it should mean that like if the thing somehow does survive, it's not just going to like romp into the city and start killing people willy nilly because like they yeah. won't be they won't have that logo on them. Yeah, or or just go into the kitchen and rip apart. The yeah, <laughs> the exactly. Goddamn yeah. chefs. Because I'm thinking like the. Um, <laughs> The, the sort of like the cleaning staff and places like that they're mm-hmm. probably like hired in from like other companies so they probably mm-hmm. won't have the official like urban pacification police mm-hmm. like logo no, no, on them maybe. so like I, I'm, I'm trying to avoid it turning into like an yeah. all-out bloodbath while still mm-hmm. getting me the distraction i want yeah right yeah you you are satisfied that you can do this now the only thing you don't know is where exactly they're holding Gustavo, like where his cell is inside there. But the rest of it, like the the rest of your pieces, are all lined up nice. Cool. And of course, you can go through walls. Yep. But um, yeah, the the one wall that you don't know is where Gustavo is. <laughs> well, my, my plan for that is pretty much swim through the soil, like go to like the first cell, basically just have like that part of my face like come out mm-hmm. the floor, have a look, see if he's in there. If not, yeah, next move on to the next one. Until yeah. I find where he is. Yeah. So eventually we're gonna we're gonna roll for you trying to figure out like how long it takes for you to find him there. But yeah, that's cool. Okay. So you've got your plan all set. You know, like sort of the general idea of how it's gonna go once you put it in motion. Yeah. And obviously w- when I get back, once Sobek's like finished his praying and etc., I'll relay like my plan to Sobek so he knows what I'm thinking. Hmm. 
<laughs> so, uh, Sobek, you're in your temple complex, which, in contrast to your tomb area of the underground comp complex that houses your, uh, well, you, your, it's your house, <laughs> really. Uh, it is in the old style. So your tomb area has been modernized, let's say, uh, by the cult to, in order to like make it nice for you in the modern age. They think uh, that's that's their own sort of design decisions, but they didn't touch the temple area at all. And uh, it is bare rock surfaces, though they're like nicely polished and all that, but it's it's rock. And um, it's lit by actual fire. <laughs> Not, there's nothing electronic there, <laughs> nothing modern. Legit it's, fire. It's, it's as, as much as you can get, it's the old school way of building temples. And um, uh, as we know, uh, your particular temple is aligned to the essence. So... Of course, there's your your judges are sort of the number one things that are worshipped in the temple uh, by you and your cult. But aside from the judges, respect and and uh, worship as well is also paid to the gods of ancient Urem, which just so we're all clear on the sort of cosmic ladder, uh, the the judges are at the top. Uh, below them are the gods of ancient Irem, which sort of were, were bastardized by the um, following Egyptian civilization into their own pantheon. And they got things all mixed up. But um, you, you also know of the gods. And as your temple is particularly focused on restoring the essence of the soul, the Ka, ka. Uh, you have quite the prominent statue of Ptah, the nameless bull, so you have this uh, large sort of anthropomorphic bull figure, like bull, bull-headed, horned figure, sort of uh, in, like in exaltation uh, as sort of like the centerpiece of your temple uh, to to channel that because the nameless bull embodies that particular aspect of the soul. So you're you're there meditating on uh, your pillars. And uh, you're, you're free to to make your role now. I do not remember at all what the role was, so I will. I think I may be the first person to actually do it. I think session. we did it last time, uh, or not? Sorry, not last time. The the previous time. And you you you, as I recall, you absolutely botched it and got like one, whereas uh, Kufu restored like all of his <laughs> his stuff. Yeah. Oh, so no, let's see. That, that does sound familiar now. Now you mention it. Uh, yeah, where are we? Here. Meditating. Here we go. Uh, once during a 24 hour period, you may spend a scene or an hour in meditation to recover your pillars. You strengthen your soul by taking refuge in your memories and your sense of self. Um, you roll your memory rating as a pool. Each success regenerates one pillar point of the mummy's choice. And okay. if you do it in your tomb, like you are, you add the geometry rating, which is five, to your roll. So add five dice as a bonus to your roll. Okay. And let me refer to the temple as well, because I don't recall the exact thing. I, I, about I, I've the, got down in my notes that uh, that car counts as plus one in our temple because it's dedicated to like inner essence. Oh, right, right, right. So it, it wasn't about the, the actual like restoring of it. It's it's that you have more ka while that's you're in right, the temple. Yeah. Now, that's not true yet because you guys haven't actually had a worship thing kick off yet and you need to basically like activate, quote unquote, the temple uh, by activate getting temple. your cult in and you lead them in the worship of the judges and then the temple provides you that particular bonus. But, but I still roll the memory plus the... Yeah, you, you still roll your memory plus five. Ooh, well, that looks like that looks better. One, two, three, three successes, I believe. Yeah, three successes. So I can restore any three pillars. I any want. three pillar points you want. Woo! <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Let's get rid of that then. And then that's okay. Yeah, I am somewhat restored. Mm -hmm. Somewhat restored. Right. Well. Uh, Kufu has completed his investigations. Sometime later, you you meet up with Sobek, or what, what's the plan? 
So, well, I, I think we should uh, spend a little bit of time just uh, kind of, since we've been awake a little longer this time, you know, a few a few times, I can vague memories of waking up, dealing with a problem, and then going back to sleep, like, you know, solve the issue, and then, you know, return to the judges. Uh, if, we're good, if it looks like we're going to be awake for a while, or we don't have a definitive mission, we should check and at least uh, ascertain how our cult is doing you know is there anything we can directly do at this point that can help maintain our position or improve our position perhaps we should arrange to speak with a uh, priest alvarez yeah and obviously anything we need in the temple the temple the temple and the tomb itself we may require their interpretation of our wishes is not always um accurate Yes, I think we'll um, we'll head to like the corporate headquarters and uh, arrange a meeting with Miss Alvarez. Okay, with the intent of like, give us a brief on the call. Yeah, but basically, yeah, yeah. basically a quick catch up. And um, mm. I think at this point in time, we may as well, since we we need to activate the temple, mm -hmm. I think we should have once we've got the lowdown on the cult, we should potentially lead them in a a ceremony of worship of the judges. To sort of reinvigorate and reaffirm their faith to the judges, and maybe maybe like uh, I'm not trying to think how so maybe kind of get an idea of how we are performing on the global stage, as we have we have we're not just here, are we? We are all different places in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the risen have been spread to the four winds. We may have communications from other arisen around the world. Very well. Well, let us speak with uh, the priest and see what she has to say. Okay. So we got to you at the corporate headquarters. Now, it's not as sort of a rushed and ramshackle affair as it was the first time you shambled there because now they know that you are here and yeah. you, they know to expect you. So we're, we're going to cut into uh, like a corporate sort of meeting room. Uh, and uh, it has a nice projector showing you the PowerPoint slides, the, the videos and, and all the media that uh, Alvarez and her attendants uh, who uh, sort of help her give you all the all the info you are being served with the finest of refreshments you think that the the liquids being served to you are probably tea of some variety or like a plant derivative drink and you you can see several like delectable uh, pastries and uh, and sugared goods uh, which which have been laid out in, in a lavish fashion uh, clearly showing respect to you. It's like they've brought out the all the, like everything silver, <laughs> everything that's that's not gold is silver on the table, and um, Alvarez is there now in her uh, CEO clothing, so smart business suit uh, instead of the extremely. <laughs> sort of aggressively ritualistic garb that she put on the first time because she was like she she uh, wanted to make a point or, or cover her bases or whatever that was but she is not there in her ritual robes now carrying a, a staff but instead you see Alvarez the CEO of the House of Repose and Restoration uh, LLC <laughs> Inc. And uh, inscribed in light are pictures and words that cover the wall onto which they are projected. You are by now familiar with this technology, but it is no less wondrous uh, in in just the pure scope of it all. And I think maybe Sobek, you being a scribe, you will start to see certain opportunities here that Khufu may not pick up on uh, quite yet, at least. But if they can 
inscribe potentially an infinite number of words on in light or lightning and just like input more just by like waving a finger around and just more and more appears that has some implications for you <laughs> I, I like to think not understanding the full sort of breadth of this technology mm -hmm. that i'm probably slightly more dismissive because the way i'm sort of seeing it is it's like i'm used to things being like carved onto walls so i can see yeah. them trying to replicate that but i'm like yeah but their way of doing it's like not permanent like we know that yeah. we know that the carvings from like ancient egypt have mm -hmm. survived to modern day whereas this when they switch off the machine it's yeah, gone it doesn't exist <laughs> <laughs> yeah Obviously, but I don't quite understand the uh, the possibilities as uh, Sobek might do. So you are given a brief of the activities of the House of Repose and Restoration. And uh, Alvarez and her attendants, of which I think there are probably altogether six. They're not always all in the room, but she brings in different people at different times. You are given a thorough rundown in fairly simple terms of of what they're doing right now so it's a twofold thing that the house is pursuing and sort of existing within uh, one of them is uh, providing funeral services which you you've come to learn that that means they have basically the cap capability of offering funerary services to all of the major different varieties of such services as might be requested. So they have the Catholics uh, capabilities. They have the Candomblé, which is the uh, sort of syncretic faith that also incorporates Catholics, uh, Catholic beliefs into sort of Afro-Brazilian things. Uh, and you have the and you're, you're given a list of the various afro-brazilian religions that like travel further and further away from the catholic influence and as they are constantly iterating and and sort of being birthed as a sort of reaction to the previous one it's like oh that thing is too catholic we're going to focus more on this and uh you learn a lot about these as a as a result but yeah their sort of idea is like one half of the the thing here is that they have a sort of franchise going uh, which caters to like doesn't matter what your beliefs are we have you covered because if we have experts on call for every sort of denomination of service you might want so they are in the funeral business and sort of i suppose like caretaking of like funerary like areas as well giving advice all that stuff yep sure. i was gonna say as they're sort of like reading off these various denominations yeah. i'll actually be pretty impressed by that you know just due to the thoroughness and mm -hmm. as we know previously, one of the things with um, Khufu, and one of the reasons he's leaned more towards the Orishas, is because a lot of the poorer people in like the favelas, etc., mm -hmm. were being sort of like edged and like pushed out, and like the urban pacification is mm -hmm. like just one obvious example of that. So I'll be quite pleased with the fact we can provide services for all these different people. But obviously, I'm trying to sort of get in with the Orishas. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going uh, when there's like a suitable pause. Obviously, mm -hmm. I'll express my approval, and then I'm going to ask Alvarez whether she can provide me with a, effectively like a document or like a file on mm -hmm. the on the the religion that the the Arishas are are assuming the roles yeah. of, basically. Yeah. So I can sort of fill myself in with more background knowledge. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, she sends one of the attendants away. And they come back with a sheaf of papers. Um, it's going to be like a primer on like condomble for for dummies, basically. So it's like a short primer on the religion religion of condomble, and um, that's based on what Alvarez knows about the Orishas. And uh, she is of the understanding that condomble is the like the number one thing that the Orishas. Uh, are sort of latched onto. Yeah. Now, I, I already have like a fairly high occult and like a specialization mm -hmm. in like superstition, but I'm basically just using this as justification to like aim that sort of speciality yeah. towards that by like filling in a bit of the knowledge for myself. Yeah. So you learn about this, and, and one of the first thing is 
um, the name sort of indicates a person who sort of celebrates the gods through dance and a lot of the activities, the, the devotions and all this, like they involve music, they involve dance. Um, these um, uh, sort of Afro-Brazilian elements, very clear, stand out, but they have uh, the, the sprinkling of Catholicism so common to the syncretic uh, religions that were established in and around Brazil and the rest of South America as well, of course. Uh, but yeah, you, you learn about their sort of baseline on the surface, like what they're about and how they sort of express their, uh, this is your, this is when we get to um, sort of like culture shock and all these like real world things where you can look this stuff up as much as I have on the interwebs, but that's where my knowledge stops. I, I know all the things I've read about Candomblé, but I, I can't actually discuss Candomblé with, a condom blur <laughs> because the like the, yeah. I have absolutely no practical understanding of of their uh, activities having never actually uh, having met one to my knowledge anyway yeah I mean I, I think sort of like in game terms obviously as we know sort of like academic knowledge so reading mm. about it's very different from like participating yeah. in actually things. lived experience yeah so my, my thoughts as Kufa with the Minotaur get some of this academic knowledge so when I which which I, I may do in this session, sort of go to the Arishas and basically like, I want to sign up. Mm -hmm. I can then sort of get myself involved in some of their stuff so I've got some actual practical experience as mm -hmm. well. But I won't just be going in cold. I'll at least have some sort of basic grounding. Yep. Yeah. You know the vocabulary to an extent. You sort yeah. of know the, the broad strokes of it. And, uh, yeah. So you, you get the primer on that. Uh, they're very pleased that you approve of the the way that they've they've approached the funeral ser funerary services, and uh, yeah, you learn that there's like it's not just Rio de Janeiro. They, they've they've got branches in other cities as well, uh, and uh, they're doing a, a good amount of, of business with that. And they're constantly trying to figure out new ways to go about that. So it's not just the burial rites and all that, but they're also expanding into, they're holding like educational classes on like traditions of these various uh, religious practices. And uh, uh, some of the like traditional arts that are associated with uh, these religions, they are sort of giving classes on uh, handicrafts, that kind of thing. Uh, and of course, uh, quite uh, expertly as well, uh, they have tied some of that stuff back into the tourism part of this whole um, business here. So uh, given that they basically operate one of the big sites along the coastline, your tomb and the, the, the sort of um, cemetery atop, it, they... They sort of they the, the this part of the business exists in a weird, like triangle of preserving and educating funerary services and tourism. Uh, but it sounds like they're making it work quite well. And of course, uh, it, maybe not all of it even makes any sense to you. But you you learn about this, and then you learn about the other part of what the the house does, and that is conversation. Uh, uh, conservation uh, of you've come to learn now uh, both actual wilderness areas as well as culturally significant sites mm -hmm. so you are given quite the list and there's there's maps that they bring up uh, as well the house is involved in a whole lot of conservation projects uh, with a lot of other partners they they can't do it on their own because they don't have the massive amounts of money but they're involved in all these different projects so they get funding from the outside and um they are involved in different sort of cultural uh sort of conservation and restoration projects of different uh ancient sites uh maintaining them in order to then maybe bring in tourism or like preserving them for um, UNESCO World Heritage, uh, that kind of thing. And uh, also they're involved in 
some of the the work that happens with the Brazilian authorities in the deeper reaches of the Amazon area, where there still are sort of semi-detached, not truly in contact, uh, original uh, residents of the forest areas, uh, the rainforest tribes and all that. Uh, they're involved in all that business with the local governments. And uh, yeah, th there's there's a bewildering list of their different uh, like cooperation partners. There's EU funded projects going on. There's all these, you presume, like these are all like spread around the world. Uh, and they, they, they seem to have struck it quite, rich quote unquote in as far as the number of projects and partners go because they're absolutely everywhere uh and they they sort of have their foot in the door like if you need to go to any country in the world to some sort of like restricted access conservation area or like historically a significant area chances are they can they have influence there uh they, it it looks quite like it, I, I suppose it would in in you uh, spring some memories of uh, like the dream of Irem and the fact that the world as you knew it at the time, the totality of the world was what Irem could reach. And your cult seems to be able to like they have their foot in the door of almost every place on earth right now. And that, that sort of gives you the, the warm fuzzy feelings <laughs> do, yeah uh, do we recall the actual geographical location of a rem like whereabouts it would have been uh you know that it's somewhere in egypt uh because you had the river and the, there's only one the river uh to you and that still exists it's the nile uh but you're not exactly sure on where where it was but you remember the river from your living days. Okay, so I think when we get to a, a suitable juncture, obviously I'll, I'll have been expressing approval for this as they've been mm. doing the presentation. Good, good work, good work. When we get to a suitable pause, I'm going to say to them, it appears you have done extremely well and we are very pleased with the progress that you have all made. Is there anything that you require from us whilst we are awake? I think she probably highlights the potential for your divine presence being a much needed boost after such a long time of dormancy in the sort of religious parts of the cult. Because we know that it's slightly compartmentalized, that there's the there's the part of the company that doesn't really know about yeah irem and and you yeah but there's there's this part of the company which very much does and they're like devoted to the cause so um alvarez does highlight the fact that now that you are here you could probably revitalize this part because she can only do so much being that she is mortal that sounds entirely reasonable we would like to lead the cult in a ceremony of worship to the judges, which may have the effects that you are seeking, priest. Holy ones, that is is more than I could ask for. Now, I I will point out something um, which you may or may not recall. There is quite the significant event in well in this part of the world, really. Uh, and especially in Rio uh, around this time. In fact, it starts tomorrow. Um, yeah, <laughs> I knew, I knew I, there was something knew, going you on. You knew. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't place it there on accident. <laughs> there is a great celebration uh, called the Carnival. And it will involve almost the entire city for the period of the best part of a week. It will cause a lot of disruption. Of course, we, we do a, a great amount of business um, in, in different 
uh, venues at the time, but there are no doubt preparations being made by all involved, the Red Sparrow probably preparing for this, the other Arisen probably preparing for this. That is That has always been to, way, to my understanding that uh, the Holy Ones are very much looking forward to harnessing the event to their various purposes. I, I thought to mention it because it will be upon us soon. Uh, and the streets uh, will be filled with uh, celebrants. It will be quite the lively time. <laughs> she, she smiles. I'll probably just glance at Sobek when she's saying that, because I, if the phrase a lively time is being banded about, <laughs> that's probably more his bag than it's mine. Like, <laughs> I, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. His concerns are with the dead. Is this carnival something that would interest you, brother? I think so. Priest Alvarez, in previous years when we have not been awakened, how has the organization involved itself in this matter he usually sponsor this year as well we sponsor uh some of the bigger and now she realizes she needs to go go back and <laughs> and explain there are uh, numerous schools of dance in the city and in the country as well but Speaking of Rio specifically, there are numerous schools of dance, the local uh, dances, and they put on these performances, I would say, um, uh, great processions of their respective arts. And uh, uh, it's a form of uh, art, dance, storytelling, and just jubilation uh, during the carnival. And they these processions of these different schools, they compete with one another for the best of everything, as, as no doubt you are familiar with, uh, who has the most um, awe-inspiring constructions to accompany their procession, uh, the, the greatest uh, effigies of uh, mythical creatures uh, from local folklore. Um, which school and their representatives have the best costumes for this particular event, which one has the uh, uh, sort of best story to tell through their dance and their various uh, accoutrements. Uh, and they compete, uh, which is not, they do not enter an arena to compete, uh, but they journey through uh, the Samba Drone, which that that sounds familiar to you. It, it's a place in Rio, which I will now ping on the map. Uh, place of history. There. Oh, right. Okay. So there is a there's a place called Samba Drone, which is where, uh, well, one of these places where these processions take place, and they are measured by the public, the revelers. And uh, a winner, winner is established at the end of all this. And they are crowned uh, the, the kings and queens of the carnival for that particular year. Uh, and, well, uh, all of this is just the main, almost professional part. Aside from this, there will be... I think annually, and she looks to one of her attendants to, as if to confirm, I think annually we are talking about maybe 2 million uh, revelers in the streets of Rio, almost around the clock. The city will be packed with people on the streets, celebrating the arts, dancing, music, uh, 
food, drink. Yeah, and this this will be true for the the, the period of a week, uh, the best part of a week. After which comes another holiday. This is, it's it's not directly connected as, as far as content goes, but there is another uh, jubilation of a different sort coming up afterwards. But uh, this this is what is upon us right now. So this will be of note if you are pursuing something in, inside Rio uh, for the foreseeable future. And we have uh, traditionally, to get back to my original, uh, your, your original question, uh, Holy Ones, uh, we have uh, traditionally sponsored several of these schools and we, uh, we hold different events. Uh, parts of the the House of uh, Repose and Restoration are holding uh, specific uh, celebrations of particular types of uh, dance and, and tradition. Uh, we are involved, dispersed into the mass that is the carnival. Uh, we do take part in several different capacities and we uh, as as many do in rio we we do enjoy a good celebration that is how the house currently uh, takes part in the carnival is there anything of your involvement that would benefit from our assistance although i fear my my brother and I gesture at Sobek may be more inclined towards this since he is more familiar with the spark of life than I. Uh, we haven't really factored this in, Holy Ones, and no, no surprise there because you haven't really been around <laughs> in the recent decades for this. I think that your presence might be well placed according to your own design or the needs and requirements or indeed uh, demands of perhaps the, the other holy ones in the city. Uh, certainly we are aware that they are those who are with us at the time of the carnival uh, make use of it in their own ways uh, for their own purposes as well but we, we do not have the uh, the details of course on on what those purposes might be but it is fair to say that the red sparrow will be involved in different manners as she usually is The others probably as well, but uh, for our activities, you are of course free to participate as well. Uh, but I, I do not think your presence is necessary in in our in in the activities of the house. I understand. Perhaps, brother, since you had expressed a wish to meet and speak with the Red Sparrow. Perhaps this may be a good yeah. opportunity to do so prior to the celebrations beginning. Yes, I, I believe that is wise. Well, you Shall are... I contact the Red Sparrow's people? Please do. Reach out, yes. She gives the nod to one of the attendants who leaves. Now, just a quick question. This, mm -hmm. is to, this is to the man in the sky, the curse master. Ah, the, uh, did, the omniscient narrator. <laughs> the man behind the, the veil. <laughs> did we previously set up a... So when we when we acquire relics and we bring mm -hmm. them back to our operations here, yeah. do we have a place that we keep them? That would be your tomb or your temple. Because we have our own relics that we yeah. used to wake us up, but do we have like a separate area, like that, a vault? That is entirely up to you. If you want to have like a separate space. Now, I was thinking like the the short term 
if you want, if you intend to have a relic and return it to the underworld, you might just well put it in your tomb and then just take it with you when you die. You go, but yeah. uh, if you want, mummies certainly do have caches of, of relics, which is both good and bad as far as anyone thinks, the judges yeah. or the arisen. Like that's like it's it's okay for the arisen to have some relics. But your purpose is to get relics to the underworld. So exactly. there comes a point when both the arisen and the judges are kind of like, "What are you, what are you doing, dude? Like you you you've got like stacks and stacks of this bring shit. Them, bring them home, boys. <laughs> yeah, but you you I'm... might well like put them away, as as we saw in in Caledonia. Like the, there was a dinky ass tomb thing which no one lived in uh, all the way in in the far corner of the world built specifically to house a relic that someone just wanted to put there. Yeah. So, yeah. I'd, I'd like to think that we probably, it's, it's some part of our installation. We have like a vault. Mm. Uh, it's either yeah. depending on how, depending on how these work, either mm -hmm. very technologically advanced as in a way of keeping it secure or mm -hmm. very ceremonial in a way. As to, well, as I'll, I'll give that to you. Uh, you can pick if it's, like a, like an old school reliquary, basically, uh, or if the cult renovated that part and now it's a modern thing where you, you actually have like a vault door <laughs> in there. I, I would have probably favor the latter, I think, because mm -hmm. I think we would have specified that the temple remains as it is due to its yeah. nature. However, essentially the reliquary would have been just a place to hold them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So you can have like a small, uh, yeah, like cordoned off area of yeah. of your your tomb complex, which is basically a shelf for, for relics. I understand it's our job in the game to acquire these things. Yeah. But yeah. it makes sense from an artist's perspective that we would tell the cult to acquire these things while yeah. they're asleep. So. Yeah, that is true. That is true. That's, that's how one of it works. I was, I was going to check in on yep. is: Have we acquired anything? Do we have anything actually on site? I'm not trying to get free items, but mm -hmm. I'm just, you know what I mean? I'm just saying, do we actually have anything there already that we can be made aware of? Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, give me a, give me a, a die of fate. Die of fate. Uh, by well, which I, I, I don't mean a fate dice, <laughs> but uh, just give me, a deep, give me a D2. Give me a D10 and uh, just a one we'll, we'll D10. see. Uh, not at the moment, no, which no, fine. which means um, that you've you've well Kufu actually because Kufu was the last one awake. Kufu's done a great job. Kufu's taken them to the underworld. Oh, so he's been a good boy. He's yeah, a, and a good um, uh, they haven't like stashed there any any yeah. any of the relics. Which that's that's not them necessarily being uh, incompetent or lazy. The one thing that you always need to take in uh, account with relics is that you as a risen are affected by the curses in the relics now if the relics are of your particular guild uh, like with you and text if you have a text relic as, as you do uh, you're you might not suffer the curse at all or it might be a lesser version reduced but impact, yeah. human beings um it's it's a it's a kind of a sort of guess as to like what happens to them if they are exposed to relics in the long term uh, some of the effects might be like it's like handling radioactive waste waste and they just yeah. die <laughs> because of the the inherent magics in the relics so it's not safe for them to do that so uh but yeah definitely it's sort of the basic default mode is for them to try and track relics for you then yeah. to go out and get it just made sense to ask because that would be something we would be interested in as yeah. soon as we can. So, John, I was just I was just checking if we had if I put the quiet any relics while we were asleep and if and where they'd be housed. And my follow up question from that, and it's sort of like a, obviously it's not chronologically linked in a sense, but it kind of the session links this together. Mm -hmm. Is I'm going to inquire. I'm going to give them a description of the relic we saw in the in the previous session, the casket. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. um, as far as no, we didn't bring that. As far as I can remember, we didn't return that to the underworld. Mm -hmm. And 
if they can find information on if it's still if it exists somewhere currently mm-hmm. <laughs> on yeah. Earth, and just kind of give them a description. If they give me some like utensils, I will draw a picture, yeah. as much detail as I can manage. Um, this is a this is something from a long time ago, and I wish to know of its location and if it's yeah. So you are given one of the attendants who like you can get the description down, you can draw it, you can talk about it, and they take it all down and they will they will look that up. So you describe the golden box that you found so long ago. Because I like the idea that, you know, we could be chasing relics that we actually found already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm, yeah. the way our memories work. Yeah. So I'm just trying to find out mm-hmm. what happened to that thing. Right. Okay. Also, so, John, I established. Sorry, I didn't mean to yeah. interrupt that. No, no. Um, while you were John, I, I established that we have like a, a modernized vault area where we keep the relics when we're not using them, and it's like it's under secure. Now, this is relics other than your centering yeah. relics, which are the, okay. the ones that you have handouts for. This is this is for like the items that you find out in the field. Okay. So. We've we've got the brief on the House of Rest and Repose. There is a whole bunch there. If you guys want to pursue, I have ideas. Uh, not necessarily for right now, but uh, just let me know if you want to look into. Basically, they they can point you towards interesting stuff because they're involved in a lot of shit. Um, but yeah, you've you've got the brief on what they're doing, uh, what their assets are, also. If you want, you can use your guild, uh, sorry, your uh, cult uh, dots to substitute for different merits. So if you need to buy something, uh, you can substitute your cult dots for resources and uh, allies, uh, contacts, that kind of thing. So basically, if you want to get something, talk to someone, you have your cult who you can talk to and they will arrange it for you. So you don't need to have personal wealth because you have a cult that has a shit ton of money. So it's just a catch all for this situation. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like the, there it's it's an entire organization organization devoted to serving you. So well, they, they as be- as far as I'm aware, like our current sort of plan of action is leading the cult in like a ceremony of worship. Um, we want to visit with the Red Sparrow, and I want to get in touch with the Orishas to try and like officially sign on with them. I'm going yeah. to check in with my guild master. Yeah. So, are we? Which one is first? Are we going to Red Sparrow first? Are we? Are we splitting up? Are we? Red Sparrow probably would appreciate us both going, but she might take it as an insult if only one of us turn up. She might v- not. Very well. Let us both visit the Red Sparrow first. <laughs> Okay, so your cult has already set that up, so uh, you can go there. I suppose now, like this, this is the evening of the fourth uh, now. So you once again find yourselves in the RS Global skyscraper, the tallest building in Rio, still all steel glittering steel and bulletproof glass uh of course like strong industrial glass anyway because the the walls are made of it and it's nice to return to a place that hasn't changed too much since we've been here some of the interior design has but it's still a straight up monolith (laughs) it's it's designed to project uh extreme uh strength and power as your ideas from back in the day would have been because your uh, Irem uh, wasn't really called Irem. It didn't have a name. It was the nameless city, the capital of the nameless empire, because you didn't need names for that stuff because it was the only one. So you you called your city the city of pillars because there were a lot of pillars in your city because the pillar is um, a sort of symbol of your highest god, uh, Azar, the uh, god of the underworld, the the lord of the underworld, who ostensibly you worshipped as the highest uh, being 
uh, in your living days in Iran. And the pillar is the spine of a czar that connects the living world to the underworld. And the Red Sparrow has constructed a giant <laughs> skyscraper sized monolith, which to you, to your eyes, seems very much like a pillar of old Irem erected uh, as if to signify this is where I am which lines up uh, with sort of your what you know about the Red Sparrow uh, already so you you traverse to RS Global you know where it is uh, the people there uh, you you remember what you, how it went down last time so you know to speak certain key words which will summon uh, a manager uh, to take over from the night desk and you are taken to the penthouse levels once more. So the interior has changed somewhat from the 80s. It's, it's more quote-unquote modern now. But still, uh, every detail is the most expensive in that category. So everything that's metal, it's... It's going to be probably gold or some uh, basically gold and steel are the the decoration choices there. Uh, every wooden surface mm -hmm. seems to be a very lustrous, some sort of exotic woods uh, from different places in the world. It's It looks like you would imagine if a pharaoh existed in the modern day, this would be the, the sort of uh, their own palace. It's much as the outside reminds you of a, of a pillar, uh, a spine of a czar uh, from old Irem. This reminds you of the opulence of some in, in the ancient days. And also it, it, it's everything here again is designed to protect uh, like power and wealth to everyone who sees it, which might not be many, but you are here once again, attended by uh, Jay de Saint-Croix, uh, the same priest that was here in the 80s, hasn't aged, aged a day, so no change at all, still the same age. And uh, yeah, you meet Teshra Gemet, the Red Sparrow. Let me bring up a picture. Uh, here we go. So we, we are faced with Teshra Gemet, dressed much as she, she is in the picture. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, she is seated very comfortably. There's a, an assortment of expensive looking snacks on, on the table beside, and uh, there's, a, there's a hookah. Uh, for three uh, on the table as well. And uh, the, uh, the Saint Croix like, motions for you to, like, you, you can you can go <laughs> have, have have fun with the, with the Red Sparrow. Yeah, I, I will sit down and I'll, uh, I'll give a respectful bow as I do so to touch her gamut. She nods, uh, putting down the hookah pipe. And uh, I, I find it this is me like yeah. totally find it interesting mm. that always coming to see the Red Sparrow, it's it's reminiscent of RM in the sense that she's trying to uh, she's trying to replicate the shadow of that place here, if it makes sense, but also the way she presents herself as being one of authority kind of just slightly, mm -hmm. uh, just slightly rubs her so back, just slightly the wrong way that she thinks that she can. Well, well if, if there's one thing we've seen, sort of going back to ancient Roman times, it's that our fellow Arisen loved to try and like remake <laughs> old Iran, or, or, or just sort of like find something that exists and then sort of like lift it up and be like, "This is the new Iran." Mm -hmm. Yeah, she she dr fairly drips of. Look upon my works, ye mighty and despair. Yeah. Like she is the embodiment of that. <laughs> She's pulled herself up. Do we, do we know what guild she came from? She's not. Uh, she is an alchemist. She is born of gold. <laughs> Which again tracks. That yep. tracks. She must yeah. be a great alchemist indeed, because yeah. look at this. Stuff. She, she's minted. <laughs> I'm yeah. out. 
sorry, no, John, like, I'm gone. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you, you don't have this. Like you have nothing like this. <laughs> Even though you're, you're called, and I will stress this, it's doing very well, and it's, it's, it's quite influential in its own way. But this, this, is something else. But yeah, she is born of gold, and uh, yeah. So as we're sitting down, I'll just say greetings to you, Tashra Gamet, born of gold. How does this turn of the Sothic wheel find you? Uh, she greets you with all the the titles that she knows uh, relate to you. So she she greets Khufu, the chronicler of the dead, uh, and uh, and Sobek, the dot dot dot. Loading, gaze, loading. Gaze of truth. What was that? Gaze of truth. Gaze of truth. Yeah, um, Sabek, the gaze of truth, and uh, you are very welcome to uh, my humble abode. I, well, much as you, uh, um, once again. Summoned by the turn of Sothis, the the time of the sharpest star is upon us again. It, I I find it always goes by so fast. I do not know if that is true or just a tick, trick of memory, but perhaps both are true. Quite, quite likely. The, well, we've the lived truth. as long as we have. Time hmm. seems much compressed. Things do change in meaning over time, uh, I find, as well. That is true. Yeah. And I suppose you've had a chance to look around. Rio, much change as well. Uh, even, even from the last time we saw each other. Somewhat, yes. Some decades ago. I I find myself pondering as Sothis rises high what will become of us the next time it does so when the turn is completed once more what new purpose will be revealed to us all indeed I find Rio much changed since the last time I was awake in the human modern year 1998 much just change but then some things stay the same some things do of course some things are eternal much as uh, we know and please uh, help yourselves if you are so inclined she motioned to the the snacks which uh, are clearly selected based on how expensive they are rather than what they are i love that we keep getting given snacks by other isn't even though we can't really eat anything oh well you can um so a quick primer on how that works you can eat it's not a case of you being vampires and having to wretch it back up Blech. you can eat things and it literally disintegrates to nothingness once it reaches your stomach yeah so you could eat forever <laughs> If you wanted to. Do we get the taste, though? Do we get to enjoy the taste? Yeah, yeah. As long as you have a, a tongue to taste with, uh, you okay. you can enjoy. It. Okay. I'll, I'll have some of the pipe as well. I'll have some of the... I was going to say, I'll pick up the, one of the ends of the, the hooker pipe and have a toot on that. I'll yeah. interject while I'm puffing away. Mm -hmm. Caref carefully phrasing there. Um, <laughs> when last we saw you, um, Red Sparrow, we, we made an, uh, an agreement with you that we would pay off a favor for your assistance she she nods the location of Kazmut. in in truth and i i remember this as well in truth it is a formality which given my recently awakened self at the time i i hung my banner upon a less than complete memory of what our relationship is, O oh, Chronicler of the Dead and Gaze of Justice. Uh... Indeed, we 
we are sure you are very busy given preparations for the upcoming celebrations. Oh, yes. And we do not wish to detain you overly long. We simply wish to inquire how you are progressing and to remind you that we have not forgotten the the debt that is owed to yourself. And if there is something you require of us, give you a chance to ask that on us because as being a scribe, the, the law and the following of the correct... Uh, what is the... Protocols. Term? Protocols is important to me and I want to show respect by giving you my attention. Um, she has a slight smile uh, as she says, uh, worry not, O oh scribe. In my domain, we all follow the diasporic code, uh, the spirit of it, oh, she's trying to quite yank attentively. <laughs> and this is a chance for me to, if you are so inclined, uh, I, I will quickly mention what the diasporic code is, Go because it's it. basically the, the cliff notes of how to exist as an arisen by the Sersha Hebsu, the Sobex guild. So let me bring that up here. Okay. So the diasporic code is something that the Sersha Hebsu created uh, to basically establish some kind of baseline, like how you should behave uh, as, a, as an arisen. And it consists of five laws named for each of the pieces of your spiritual self, the soul. So the first is the heart law, which is interfere with the cults of other deathless if you would fertilize the sands with mortal blood under the god's silent gaze. Is so that's the, to the pillars by any chance. Uh, well, it, it is like one to one, uh, yeah, the like the, the pillars. pillars. I just, I just yeah. noticed yeah. Uh, like yeah, yeah. A yeah, it's, it's the, the first one is the heart law as coming from the, the heart pillar. So uh, interfere with the cults of other deathless if you would fertilize the sands with the mortal blood under the god's silent gaze is the first guide, uh, well, law rather, uh, for Arisen to follow. Which you know is meant to discourage Arisen having their cults fight. I mean, I, I don't want to say that's not followed, but we have yeah, I mean, it's the, these are <laughs> we, we'll get to that, <laughs> but that that is the the heart law. Then we have the spirit law, which is when desires clash, submit to arbitration or suffer judgment, which you know is meant yes. to like get arisen to come to you, your guild, if yeah. they have conflicts. So if two arisen are having a, an issue. They should come to you because you are the judges of these things. You are the, the judiciary branch and you, you can that, give that judgments. Is, that is kind of what, what you felt before when you said, when was it Ibsha or Kesmut that said, not Kesmut, um, the other guy, the, uh, the bullheaded guy, it's where, that we were unique and that we had walked a kind of line between all the arisen. I thought that was kind of a reference to the fact that obviously I'm, a, I'm technically a mediator. Yeah, yeah. The um, I think that was Ibsheta, uh, yeah, who yeah. who was talking about the fact that, like, he he doesn't understand how how you're you're trying to like be independent, basically, is what he was trying to say. But yeah, the the spirit law is is meant to like get the other arisen to come to you for arbitration, and the incentive there is, if one party comes to you, the other one doesn't you will favor the one that did come to you. Naturally. So, um, Which is interesting why I favored helping the cult retrieve Bendes because they came mm -hmm. to us mm. to help. Yeah, yeah. Sakmis didn't, but then Sakmis wasn't awake. <laughs> um, then is the essence law, which is do not break the seal of a holy tomb unless you wish to offer its treasures sevenfold. Don't rob other arisen's tombs. They are sacrosanct. You cannot go there unless you have permission. And, <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of law breaking that's been going on. <laughs> we'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> so that is the essence law. Basically, 
stay out of other, each other's tombs because that's too important for you to fuck with. Uh, don't steal each other's relics. <laughs> Which is, is that happens. That's not a law that is very closely followed. Um, but it is, uh, like, in general, it enjoys, uh, like, the popular support, of course, because you don't want someone coming to your tomb messing your stuff. Um, we have the name law, which is the serpent pillar. Make no alliance with the lifeless or usurpers of Irem's lore, or you will worship at the altar of 42 torments. This is the the sort of big no in your existence, the lifeless and anyone who's trying to usurp Irem's legacy are, if such a thing can exist, the enemies of the judges uh, by default. You shall not fraternize with those because they are a capital E enemy. We shall destroy them. Yeah, that and that isn't like there's sense in because all of these are interpreted, of course, and that's kind of where your guild comes in. But for example, Kufu currently has at least two lifeless in your tomb because Kufu has set these sentinels there. They are lifeless by nature because they are animated by Kufu's necromancy, but that's not bad. Uh, the the bad lifeless are the ones that you don't control and. Uh, for example, the Amkat, the, they are lifeless yeah. as well, and you don't control those. Yeah, I was going to say, I think calling what we what sort of hold I have over my Tomb Guardians an alliance would be stretching it a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because it, it's entirely subservient to Khufu's necromantic powers. That would be spinning it in a way. Yeah, yeah. but like it basically, don't ally or help the Shuangshan, the the dark reflections of yourselves. Don't make Amkat for Christ's sake. <laughs> Like don't don't do that. Uh, don't do uh, like don't ally with any of these uh, unholy things, and and you will not have to suffer at the altar of forty two torments, which is basically as as close as you can come to capital punishment for arisen. Uh, it is gruesome indeed what happens uh, for if you break that particular law. Okay, so then we have the shadow law, the last one which is grasp the sunlit flail of rule and you shall be condemned to the dark sarcophagus. Don't rule openly is the, this one. Uh, you can pursue as much influence as you like. No problem. No one cares. Don't be a god king, though, because that doesn't work and you will sort of um let's see um digging into here so um it, it's a threefold error it says in the sort of rationalization of the law first it would damage the plans of your fellow deathless whose cults and true natures might be exposed if you are like witness my glory <laughs> i am imhotep uh second it might set the mass of humanity who are now all rebels lest we forget all rebels from the nameless empire in open war against their natural rulers, i.e. don't unify all of humanity against yourselves. And finally, it would reveal that magic is not disorganized, ineffectual superstition, but an ancient science. And it might inspire mortals to study it without the guidance of Irem's gods. And they might do something you really don't want them to do. So basically, yeah, you can rule as much as you like. Not in the open, though. Like, you, you need to do it so that no one knows it's actually a, a deathless sorcerer from prehistory. So basically, if you, if you want temporal power, be careful. Because you don't want to screw it up. And no one else does either. So, as far as I remember, I have not screwed up. Yeah, yeah, no, you you guys are very like that. You're in the green for that. Uh, for the moment. 
yeah, it's it's you, you have there's no word that I've heard which is about you guys trying to be like open masters of humanity at, at any point. So and that by the way, that doesn't mean that you can't reveal your true nature to humans. Of course you do, because you have cults. But the point is don't become president pillar. <laughs> that that's not cool. Don't try and rule over everything. Yeah. Don't rule in the light. And be careful who you rule over in the dark. Mm. Don't make packs that uh, yeah. Augie will find out about. Yeah, or at least be ready to crush everyone in the dark if if necessary. But yeah, that's the that's the, the deal. And of course, the shadow law was understood quite differently in the before times because back then you would have more people with a different take on supernatural ideas compared to current day so maybe like some thousands of years ago you could get away with being a god king for a, for some time and have absolutely no problems at all but if you if you throw or if you overthrow brazil's government <laughs> and set up the new Senate of Irem. Uh, no, <laughs> it's, it's going to go badly it. for you. <laughs> yeah. So it's not so much the masquerade of vampire fame because it's like you, it, your concerns are vastly different from the vampires. It's just about trying to keep your shit together because you are, or you should be aware that Irem is gone. Like it's, it's no longer here and you're, you, you're left with limited shit and you need to be careful how you use things. Well, my takeaway from this is if, is if the sparrow asks me to do something I'm bound to do but breaks one of these laws, I'm going to be in a bit of a pickle. Depends. And uh, that, that is something you can probably ascertain with your guild master as well, uh, which you haven't yet talked to her, but um, you, you are aware that this is the code this is this is the way, uh, but of course your entire existence is interpreting laws like these, and how these are interpreted and put into action varies, like vastly. Uh, so you don't exactly know how it's done, and of course this is just what your guild thought up. This this is marketed by your guild as the way to live as a mummy. We deeply researched it. I'll have you know. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you like focus tested it, and <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's all fine. It's supported Stop by the science. Test of time. <laughs> yeah, but the the fact is, unless you scribes are respected, you can't enforce the punishments for any of these. So, unless your guild holds the power to enforce these laws, who needs to give a shit? is the sort of cold, hard reality of it. If we want to look at mummies as callous things, but yeah, uh, you don't have all the information yet as far as like, how does this work here? But Teshro Gamet, to get back to the convo, um, Teshro Gamet has just said that, uh, no, like no need to worry. Like we, we follow in my house, we follow the diaspora code, the spirit of it. But of course she'd tell me that. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> She said she's yanking my chain. She said she would, she would, and also, I think you would remember because you bought some memory there as well. Those born of gold basically look at rules as okay, so you say that, however, I'm better if I don't do what you said for me to do, and I can be better afterwards. And if you can't either catch me in the act or punish me. Why do I care? It's only a rule <laughs> if we can enforce it to yeah. them. It's, it's only a rule if they need to care about it. I can't, Which... wait, until, I can't wait until we do, a, we do like a, a mummy version of A Few Good Arisen. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. Courtroom drama. Yeah. <laughs> Jacuzzi. Yeah. Good. Good times. So... 
yeah, uh, apologies for for that aside, but there's there's a bunch of these concepts that we haven't had the chance to dig into, and I, I find them to provide some uh, juicy context for our things going forward. So, uh, what were we talking about? Um, we were talking about the preparations, of course, for um, the carnival. Yes. I also asked the Red Sparrow if there was something mm. that, that that we could do that would. Mm. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah the deck. deal. The deal, um, yeah. So she, uh, having said that, she sort of smirks her way through a puff of the the pipe and uh, puts it down. Takes a couple of grapes and starts picking them apart and uh, eating them. And she says. As, as I mentioned, uh, my request for a favor uh, w was based on, at the time, incomplete recollections of our relationship. Uh, o Chronicler of the Departed and Gaze of Justice. I wonder now whether you also have recovered some of your memories as relates to our specific arrangements as she pops in a, a grape and waits I for you to... I feel like there's apply. a roll coming here. <laughs> <laughs> Do we recall <laughs> our arrangements? I... She's been here a long time, as you've yeah. established, so mm -hmm. there is a very high chance that we have had dealings before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you know that you've been, like you remember it in the 80s that you've been to her place before. I need to make a roll here. Is this going to be? Hmm. I don't think you you remember Kufu. You had five memory. Is that Kufu? Give me um, give me an intelligence roll. Straight intelligence. Yeah, straight intelligence. Oh, this will be this will be funny. <laughs> I feel like I'm the one who has the keen mind. Oh. Back yeah, in. this this will be three successes on two dice. How about that? Yeah, That's boy. <laughs> so o Kufu obviously, has... I have remembered these deeds well. <laughs> so you recall now that she mentions it, you recall that you've actually had an ongoing arrangement uh, with the Red Sparrow for. You don't exactly remember how long, but it's it's been a constant thing whereby you've ostensibly established an alliance of sorts. You're not quite sure on the details of, of how or why, especially why that's a complete blank to you, like why you started this, which would maybe indicate that it's kind of further back in time, but you vaguely remember having these kinds of conversations several times over your past lives where you, you come together with the Red Sparrow and you reestablish that, like we remember these things, i.e. that the Red Sparrow and you, yourselves, your two selves, are not exactly a merit as such, not exactly a group like the Ocorte Secreto, but there's a, there's a subterfuge that you've engaged in over several lifetimes that you can recall at present where you and the Red Sparrow have conspired to alternately undermine and raise up some of these other groups of mummies in Rio. Specifically, Kufu, you remember that this is not the first time you've had thoughts of, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll go maybe see about the Orishas. And, and Sobek, uh, when, when prudent, you will also have uh, an inkling of, well, you've already been told quite explicitly that you've had dealings with Ocorte Secreto. And you yeah. also will have memories of having done so several times uh, throughout your past lives. 
with the explicit intent, which lines up as, as these memories surface at the same time as um, the Red Sparrow talks about these things with a sort of like her voice almost carries to your memories as you, you recall them. Uh, as if she has said these things many times before. I would once again ask you to involve yourselves in the affairs of the Orishas. And she motions to you, Kufu, and Okorta Segredo motions to you, Sabak. As we have done so many times before. I presume, since you are here, that you have at least partially recalled our covenant and have chosen to pursue it still. Indeed, I have recalled some of our prior arrangement. It is my intent, prior to this meeting anyway, to approach the Orishas. Good. It is a time of great change. Not only is the sharpest star in the highest position, but in this world, and I am not sure how much your cult has been able to tell you, but we have the carnival is coming up. Mm -hmm. The wheel has turned. So we will all be here. <laughs> all of us, all of us arisen the deathless will parade for the first time in the carnival as numerous as as possible in rio which brings a whole set of concerns to the table which have not existed before the other consideration is that specifically Ocorta Segredo has been maneuvering on the world stage as is their want, nothing new there. But what is new, perhaps, for them is that they have succeeded uh, in quite the effort and we have an international event coming to Rio. Okay, let me just quickly, I'm referencing a date. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So some turns of the moon, hence, will be a gathering summoning not only the presence, but especially the eyes of the entire world to Rio. The people call this particular period of time the month of August. If you recall, that, that is a reference to one of the old Roman rulers from so long ago, Augustus. I remember him slightly. Indeed, I also recall Rome. Heady days, those. And heady days are ahead of us as well as borrowing from an even more ancient tradition than the calendar name. The games of the ancient Greeks are coming to Rio. In the month of August, there will be the Olympic Games which not merely the gathering may be familiar to you from antiquity, held on uh, sacred grounds for Greeks and some of their neighbors to toss each other around in the dirt. This is a, a truly worldwide affair. Several things have turned quite upturned the entire city for this. 
uh, you may not have had time yet to browse all the new construction around, but the city has gone through several changes in preparation for this as the mortal authorities are preparing to host ostensibly the world <laughs> in Rio. Again, an unprecedented time for the Arisen to all be awake for this event. A lot will be happening. Uh, how could it not? <laughs> Under these portents, how could things not happen uh, that we need to address? Things we cannot foresee yet, uh, things which will just catch us unawares and we, we will have to attend to them as they do. All of this in mind, the others will be seeking to upset the balance of Rio. And to that end, I would once again call on you, Chronicler of the Departed, Gaze of Justice. Act as my hands and eyes in the Orishas and Ocorte Segredo so that we can perhaps mollify their most dire urges and preserve all of mummy, uh, all of all of arisen uh, efforts thus far that have been gained in Rio. Hopefully, if if you do choose to honor the covenant once again, hopefully, the arrangements that have previously allowed you to act in the same capacity will still allow you to do so. That might not be the case. Who knows what memories they have left as the tide of Sothis rises them up from their repose. It might be quite difficult. It might not. I do not know at present. But at this point, what I do know is that we are called to purpose, not of the judges, but of the mortal world's affairs for the moment, given the rise of Sothis, and given that we are all here, and there are some dreams in Rio which I would not see fulfilled for the upheaval that they bring with them. And it is my hope that speaking earnestly I might find friends in you, or at least if not friends, then acquaintances pursuing a greater goal, preserving that which is worthy in Rio. As I'm sure you're aware, Tash or Gamut, both myself, my brother, and our organization is dedicated to the preservation of what we believe to be worthy in both culture, ancient, and of the present times. I believe I can speak for myself and Sobek when I say that if it is a matter of preservation, as opposed to destruction or upheaval, then you would have our support. She, um, nods to Kufu appreciatively and turns to Sabek to see if Sabek also underwrites this. <laughs> Can I t take a deep breath even though I technically don't have lungs? As always, when dealing with matters of the Arisen, these scribes stand ready and able to make sure that their petty squabblings do not destroy the world as the judges ultimately see it is no small task to keep the scribes and she rolls her eyes a little bit of rio uh in uh in check 
I hope, Sabek, that you are up to the task for Bontanath and Okorta Segredo are uh, quite the beast to tackle. That is the thing about beasts. They are powerful and ferocious, but when directed correctly, useful, aren't they? Well, we shall see. They surely are ascendant in the coming uh, turns of the moon, given their particular proclivities and the festivals, which overlap with said proclivities quite intensely. You will have your work cut out for you, and I hope that I will hear of what is planned in Ocorta Secreto, as well as the the favela houses of the Orishas uh, sooner rather than later. And we can determine how best to take steps going forward in this unprecedented time. So with, with that being said, you can consider the debt as such uh, to be null and void as we had previous arrangements which make it unnecessary. Again, as part of the government, I will be able, hopefully, to offer you advice in your capacity, uh, whatever that might be for this particular turn. I will be able to assist you with my meager means. And together, I hope we will weather this storm as well, as we have done so many times before. It bears mentioning Please try and keep the covenant secret once more. I seem to recall we have successful, su been successful in that previous times, and I would wish to keep it so. For as long as we know more than they do, we have the advantage. We have more prosperity on our side. Speaking of which, I seem to recall a report that places the both of you on Murda Urca, close to Sugarloaf. That is correct. Quite intriguing, that. Now, here's a question for you as players. <clears throat> Would you be hmm uh, Sobek, you, you saw the the fountain of of Deadwin uh, rising up from Sugarloaf Mountain certainly did would you be interested in that that goes for Sobek and Khufu uh, both like would that be something that you would have been interested in in past lives the mystery of it yeah, well, in general, like the, the 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 topic of there's a mountain, for whatever reason, there's plain like magic power springing from the ground. I, I think definitely it's reasonable to assume that we'd be, have been interested in a magic yes. mountain. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Escaped so a magic mountain is good. I yes, I would. Yeah. So she she says as as I recall. It is now, Sobek, uh, your turn on the role of prosperity. Did you perhaps partake? Do I know what that is? That doesn't seem 
like you do. But she is clearly acting as if if it should ring a bell. Uh, at which point, I'm going to try and cover for Sobek because I'm like, given that our memories are sort of fairly similar with one or two variants, I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't remember it. I'm mm-hmm. gonna I'm gonna say, um, whilst I'm sure my my brother recalls the details of this, my memory is a little hazy. Perhaps you would do me the the honor of enlightening Taking me. Taking a deep puff of that pipe, just where mm. like. Mm-hmm. Look like um oh, yeah yeah mm, mm, mm. yes quite. <laughs> so, oh, very good, very good, Kufu. The role of prosperity, to give you the quick version, is merely the list of those arisen in Rio, um, managed by myself, which assigns a period of time during which the fountain on Sugarloaf Mountain is active. And during those periods of time when, as is the true of you now, Sobek, you have the privilege of uh, partaking of of the Fountain of Ma'at uh, at the top of Sugarloaf Mountain for this particular period of time. Now, you, you may partake it of, of it yourself. You might offer it to whoever you choose. However, once your time has come to an end, it will pass, the privilege of partaking will pass on to the next one in the role of prosperity, and they will have the same privilege. Uh, What I'm asking is, did you partake of the mountain uh, already? The the fountain, sorry, not not the mountain. I did not, no. To my best of my knowledge, I did not. Yeah, you you didn't. You weren't there. You were at the, the Adjacent smaller mountain, Mora da Urca. Perhaps it might be wise, brother, before we engage in our various tasks to make the most of our time and partake of the fountain as described by. How much time do we have to use it? Just to. Re- yeah, I was I was just looking that up. I didn't <laughs> I didn't plan for this, so I'm just looking up the window uh, of it. Uh... Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, here we go. Uh, Fourteen days. When did it, when did it begin? Uh, I'm gonna say it began uh, four days ago at the start of February. Now, so you have ten more days to choose when, if you want to partake. When I was tripping in the you know the the jungle of many many problems. <laughs> Yeah. That's the that's the technical name for it. <laughs> technical name. Was that was that more than four days ago? Just to make sure I understand. The no, that time. that was like yesterday, uh, right. or okay. rather like earlier today. <laughs> it, okay. It's not long ago though. Um, I don't know if our arrangement extends to this kind of information. Um, forgive it, but could you tell me who had access to that mountain just previous to myself? I'm going to make a roll. I don't know if I get a bonus because I'm a scribe and she can't, she can't argue with the law. <laughs> I am no. the law. law. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh... My reason being, this is to my brother Kufu, is the fact that potentially if what happened there, when we were there, was the result of another Arisen's machinations, and they may have an arrangement with the sparrow to use that mountain at that time before I before I took over and you know. Uh okay. So perhaps the previous name on the Rolo de Prosperidade mm-hmm. uh, is Amun Ruby. I'll put that in chat. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, you haven't heard this name before uh, to your recent recollections. That sounds like a new NPC. Um, yeah, it is, it is a new NPC. Uh, Amun Ruby, the um, uh, Granite Sphinx is his title. Okay. Okay. Um, out of respect to our arrangement, and um, I, I understand this is where I do not not required to tell you this information, but this is our respect or from our arrangement. And when we were there at this mountain mm. during what would be the beginning of my turn, mm. um, I should describe. Obviously I knew that. Mm. Obviously I knew that. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, we encountered a MCAT of prodigious strength. Um, at Murda Urka. Mm-hmm. Yes. That is troubling in the extreme. Very much so. We attempted to deal with it. Um, my brother and a fellow ally, believe it or not, Ibshet, was there with us. She rolls her eyes. Yeah. There's, there's no disguising the absolute contempt she has. Yeah. <laughs> that, I that, that I, I'll, I'll smile a bit because that's, a, in my mind, that's an entirely appropriate response <laughs> yeah. for mentioning also, Ibshet. Ibshet had a similar reaction to her name. Yeah, yeah. So true, true. It's, it's 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 perfectly reasonable. There was some kind of mortal ceremony going on. We were trying to deal with a an issue between two arisen, as as is your request. In fact, that that would be if it's Ibsheta. It was Ibsheta, one of these aggrieved parties. He was more of a. He was liaising with us. The the nature of the ceremony, we were we were sort of taking advantage of his expertise, shall we say. He was it, watching from the sidelines. No, he got he got he came onto the field. He got he in fact he was instrumental in us finding out what was going on. I'm not sure I would go that far. I I will put that down as one of the extraordinary things about this turn of the wheel. The the ceremony that my brother mentions was being held by the Igraded <laughs> Serpent Penis, the Church of the Feathered Serpent. Mm. Mm. One of the one of the many divergent branches of faith doesn't uh, sound familiar, but then there are an innumerable amount of these. So. Th- this umcast of prodigious potency is somehow connected to this spiritual group. Indeed, we were we were requested to look into the matter by the cult of Apep Medes. So, if Ibsheta was there, and you had two aggrieved parties, that would be. Up at Medes and Sakmist. Am I correct in this? You are correct. The, so. the dispute centered around that Apep Medes' body had, for all intent and purposes, been placed into a, a deep slumber from which he could not be awakened. His body had been detained by the cult of Sakmist, although Sakmist himself was not awakened when this happened although he was later awakened. We were able to negotiate the the handing over of Aped Medes' physical form back to his cult without further harm to him. However, in our investigations, we discovered that some contrivance of the Church of the Feathered Serpent, I believe they called it a sacrament, had dislocated his spirit into some form of spiritual reflection of the the area surrounding Sugarloaf Mountain. Sobek ventured there himself and found that the the spirit of Apat Medes was confined there and with the aid of Ibsheta they were able to loose his spirit. But when they returned to this mortal plane, the the great Amcat that dwelled there, alike to a feathered serpent itself, followed after them. 
well, there is clearly some link between this church and the Amcat in question. Clearly. Well, the Amcat will not be staying around Murla Orca, if that is where it was. Indeed, I, I have monitored the the local news outlets and given that there has not been mention of such a beast I would assume that it has spent its energy and discorporated at least for a time at least it will be moving to a different location indeed I would secure your relics and tell those you care for to also secure theirs because if we have well clearly this Amcat being as it sounds to be of the more ascendant variety indeed uh it is, it is not an accident that they appear ergo there is an intent that brought it here which will probably be looking for relics to fuel the amcat after a certain point so as a first precaution on, until we can do more look after your relics and be alert, I suppose. Uh, but for what I am hearing is that you have a fantastic tool now to integrate both to the Orishas and Ocorte Segredo, given that the agreed parties were of these two merits, pull on that chain, your involvement in this affair, this, what it sounds like to me, a fairly embarrassing event, maybe not for the Orishas, but at least for Ocorte Segredo, Pull on that, your capable intervention in affairs, settling this. Sobek, you have the vocabulary uh, in hand for this much better than I do, no doubt, given your particular uh, guild. Use this to put your foot forward and gain access to these merits. It is immediate, it is fresh in their minds, and at least for the Alcorta Segredo, it is embarrassing. And they care for that thing quite a lot in certain contexts. But Very well, then. I would suggest, brother, that we detain the Red Sparrow no longer. We advise our cult to secure our relics and then that we each make our way to our respective assignments after visiting the mountain to avail ourselves of the, the fount of Deadwin that is there. Agreed. Allow me to give you a parting gift if if you are indeed I really hope departing. It's not an I really hope it's not an MCAT. <laughs> Feathered serpent. Blah! <laughs> Shit. <laughs> no. Um, she pushes a, a, a button uh, on... Uh, it's it's basically a mobile phone on the table that she pushes on, and uh, it connects, and she says, uh, uh, please bring in the gifts, and uh, closes it. Uh, you, It's, it's an unfamiliar servant that comes in uh, with a fairly sizable pillow on which rest... Uh, a football an inflated football and um, a toy car like a child's toy car that you can uh, there's like a spring inside that you can if you put it on the ground draw it back it, it charges the spring and it, it will go forward uh, uh, for a, bit, a little bit so these two things on this fairly large pillow the servant comes in sort of goes down on one knee in front of both of you, and uh, sort of bows ahead, and uh, Deshra Gamet says, you are, you are free to choose either one. Uh, you will, and you, you kind of do as well, uh, recognize these as vestiges, which are not relics, but they are infused with enough mortal life experience, mor mortal connection, mortal sentiment, that they have some manner of actual, like, extractable, useful 
essence in them. Um, these are essence. Uh, these are these are uh, vestiges which contain enough uh, wh whatever it is to allow you, if you so choose, to either integrate it into your uh, tomb's central relic to like bolster the relic inside your tomb, or if you so choose, you can consume a vestige to restore your pillars for, for one point, uh, or depends on how powerful it is, but these are like one point vestiges. So you have basically two mystical uses for these, either consume it, destroy it for your own gain and gain one uh, pillar point uh, back, uh, or you could uh, take some time, take it back to your tomb and integrate it to the tomb's life web and like tie it to your relic and, sort of empower your tomb further. Okay, so I will I'll reach forward and I'll pick up the, the football mm -hmm. and I will say thank you for these gifts. They are greatly appreciated. Tetra Gamet uh, closes her eyes, bows her head deep. That's always a pleasure. So Sawbeck, you are left with the sort of wind up toy car. I look at I have legit no idea what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's something. <laughs> it's something. Okay, yeah. But the the ball, you know, instant instantly what that is because that that kind of sports go back a long way. <laughs> so you know, you know, that, it's, it's that, a, that's why I went for that because I was like, yeah. I don't really understand cars. <laughs> However, yeah. I, I'm aware of ball games. Yeah, yeah, ball games, absolutely all day. You don't know the rules of the day, but you know ball games. So. There's so that. obviously we'll, we'll say our farewells, mm -hmm. etc., yep. to Tesho Gamut, and as we're walking out, I will say to Sobek, "I would say, my plan is to return this item to the the tomb, given that these these Olympic Games are coming to Rio, and their their coming will change the landscape." certainly for the mortals and for us arisen as well it would seem fitting that an item such as this which speaks to the the competition and the nature of this sort of festival this gathering would be incorporated into our tomb perhaps it may align us more closely with the the spirit of this age you say it has a certain sense to it yeah, it starts bouncing it up on <laughs> yeah i have the feeling i'm just sort of walking this thing i have a feeling this is not of eremite nature no 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 these are entirely created from yeah. mortal attachments uh of like there's something it's it's kind of like psychic resonance attached to items uh because they were important to someone someone living at some point in time so were these created intentionally? No, they they happen entirely by accident. just accident, basically. Right. So if like someone goes to a war, and let's say they survived only because of the blind luck of having like a hip flask, like catch a bullet, that yeah, hip flask might thing. become the thing because it it has a lot of yeah, meaning. It's, it's absorbed like the the sort of the emotional resonance yeah. and yeah. yeah. And there's different kinds of these uh, that have like because they happen by nature just over time just everywhere all the time um there and i say everywhere all the time it's not that they're common this is indeed quite the gift that tesro gamut is just like apparently like throwing to you is like yeah oh to, just to, a nice gift for you before you go yeah to, to, to be fair given that like we know that like you can absorb these and take essence i'm like yeah. effectively she could have done that yeah and she's she just could. handed them to us so yeah. i'm actually quite touched by the gift but so, it, it is entirely a natural product of humanity, as as it, as it was. Okay, so I'm thinking so back. Obviously, I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to mandate what you need to do with your your vestige, but I suggest we return to our cult. We advise them to ensure that all of our relics are secure. At which point, I will yeah, attempt to. I will place my vestige within within mm -hmm. the tomb 
and let them to integrate it with the flows of energy throughout our tomb. If you wish to do so with yours, you may do so, but please do not feel compelled to. After that, I suggest we travel to Sugarloaf Mountain to avail ourselves of the font of Deadwind there. And I'm then gonna bring we'll... the car with me for, for now. As you now. wish. Okay, then, so we, we, yeah, please. Then once we have availed ourselves of the font of Deadwin, I suggest we then each go to our respective assignment due to the Accord of Sigredo and the meet of the Orishas. Quick, quickly, I'll, I'll, do I know what, 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 what I'm supposed to do when I go at this mountain? Like, do I absorb the magic? Is that, is that the thing I'm supposed to do? Like, what? Or am I supposed you... to put a ritual on board? Or do I not actually have any idea what yeah, it is? Yeah, um... Well, I'm planning to drink it like this kind of Red Bull. <laughs> yeah, just chug it down. Uh, you know what what it is. You've seen where it is, how it is. However, and, and you didn't pursue further conversation about this topic with Tesla Gamut, but you have absolutely no idea, aside from what you've seen, and what Tesh Rogema told you, which isn't a lot. It's just that it's your turn and you've seen the thing, but that's all you know about. <laughs> Can I offer Sobek any suggestions? Because I've actually seen someone using Dead One before, but back in the um, back in Copacabana. Because I saw um, older. Yeah, Ibsheta was there. Ibsheta. And get, Sakons. Get yeah, Sakons, the um, oubliette of. Uh, Innocence. Flowers, maybe out of flowers. <laughs> yeah, get it, getting uh, getting the dead went on. So I, I at least have like a vague idea of like how they went about mm -hmm. it. Of course, in in this instance, it is at, at least to to Sobek, It's quite like explicit with with the um, New Year celebration. It's not that there is a fountain of the stuff. Uh, and that is the case with Sugarloaf. There is a literal fountain coming from the ground. Just blah. This this is this is dead one. Magic. This is power manifested. Well, well uh, my my current plan, Sobek, is to basically find this fountain of dead wind and stand in it. That works as because it's a fountain, right? You, yeah. You, you can I, I, stand I'm, in it. I'm thinking of back in the day you know if you found like a fountain of water and you need to like cleanse yourself and stuff like that you would let the water rain down on you and obviously give thanks for the water in like the very dry arid climate of Irem so I, I'm sort of going on my half memories of how they used Deadwin back in Copacabana back in yeah. the 80s and also like my memories of actual fountains mm -hmm. so I will I will give you a wits roll each just pure wits, wits. Uh, rather, wits. A wits or intelligence. Either, either one works. Uh, you can pick which, whichever Cheers one. For that. Yeah. Wait, can I use my eyes of justice on this? Ooh. Okay, cool. Guess one. Yeah. I have a thing here. Is it enlightened senses, maybe, or something. I have a thing about. Would you consider this an enigma? <laughs> <laughs> What's the full context? Uh, it's enlightened senses can perceive perceiving things, basically. But I can also add plus two in the following actions for the mummy's perception rolls, craft rolls, to create art, investigation rolls, to solve enigmas. You're, yeah, you're not really solving the I'm enigma here. But yeah. I think what he's trying to ask is, can we like, skulk up there and... Yeah, can we skulk up there and, and stealthily determine just, what it is? I was just seeing if I could help myself a little bit there, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, you can get an extra bonus because you have God Sight. And that gives you not like pure data, but it gives you an impression on things. So. How much how much of a bonus do I uh, have? Just the one. one just the one, though. Just the one. All the eyes. All the eyes. No. Oh, sure. Wound oh, penalty sorry. as well, because you're 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 session. beat to shit. Yeah. So, what do you have? What, what kind of wounds? Because you might not have those anymore. Uh, well, that was in the Roman times. Uh, I was <gasps> dead. Yeah. Oh, no, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'll say he had the ultimate wound. <laughs> yeah. I know. I took a lot of wounds, and then I and then I died. Yeah. That, but that you I can died. you can you can put those away. <laughs> okay. That was my bad. I should. Yeah. Moved. You can roll two more dice because that's the wound penalty. 
and we're we're looking at uh, a good number of successes here. Okay, you one get one more. Success. So Kufu, uh, not really. Um, aside from your own, what you've just explained, you you're sort of satisfied with with those deductions. However, our keen mind of the gaze of justice, mind, um, yeah. you you sort of into it that given how casually with no prelude at all Tesh Gamut was just throwing it out there it's like so what about the uh, the the fountain like did you did you go there because it's your turn and didn't explain anything that kind of sticks out to you as like you should maybe know about this and sort of rifling through your memories you know absolutely nothing about this aside from what you've learned since you woke up this time yeah there's a there's a void of knowledge about this that maybe is anomalous because apparently at least from Tesh um sort of behavior she maybe kind of expected you to know at least something <laughs> about this. Do I know? This is going to sound, this is going to sound very twisty. Mm -hmm. Would I be aware, or would either of us be aware, of anything that could restrict our memory? Get, like, restrict us from gaining certain memories, like, on purpose, like, something deliberately... It, it stands to reason that that would be true, uh, because, you like, the way that your life exists right now is you're constantly struggling to remember things because it always slips away from you as you perish. I, I, I have a so suggestion to that. resolve this. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to do, we're, we're going back to like drop off my vestige in the, mm -hmm. the, the tomb and advise the cult, you know, make sure yep. relics are secure and yada, yada, yada. Whilst we're there, I'm going to, first of all, I want the cult to get both me and Sobek a mobile phone. Yep and instructors in their use. Mm -hmm. And secondly, since they arranged the previous meeting with the Red Sparrow, I'm mm -hmm. basically going to see if I can get them to arrange like a conference call with the Red Sparrow. Sure. And, yeah. th and then basically I'm going to say like, it's obviously like Sobex in the room. I'm going to say like, don't mm -hmm. say anything during this call. Pretend you're not here. Just like, yeah. listen. Then my plan is basically, I'm going to like get in this conference call with the Red Sparrow. And I'm going to say, I, I apologize for uh, bothering you again, Tasha Gamid. I, I didn't want to mention this in front of my brother because, quite frankly, I'm a little bit embarrassed by the the, the, the gap in my memory. <laughs> although I although I have experience with Deadwin, and I'm gratified to find that the, the, the Fountain of Mart is available to us, I find that my memory is not sufficiently returned in order for me to be aware of how to best use that. As I say, I didn't wish to mention this in front of my brother because his memory seems to be returning a, a lot more quickly than myself and I am a little embarrassed by this. But if you were willing to instruct me, I would be greatly appreciative. Um, so in the interest of time, um, she, she mentions that uh, it is, of course, entirely understandable. And it is always better to pursue knowledge rather than uh, not. <laughs> it's, it's always safer to get advice. Of course. And, and I can think of no one I would rather, uh, no one more knowledgeable I would rather ask this of. You, you merely step into the fountain uh, to partake of of it uh, you may find that there are consequences afterwards there always are Very uh, well. you might you might find it disorienting in the extreme uh, now is it is it you or Sabek uh, intending to make use of the fountain. Naturally, it is Sobek's turn on the roll of prosperity, uh, and far be it for me to... Like, it is none of my business, uh, just to satisfy my curiosity, which one of you is is going to use it? Is it only possible for one of us to use? 
Against yes, the once Gimlet. once used, uh, it will be depleted for a time. Then I believe, given that it is Sobek's turn on the the role of prosperity, mm. it is only right that he should be the one to do so. Very well. Um, so that is that is the long and short of it. It is a great mystery. Uh, there is quite a lot that has been said, and more that has not been said. I would wager about the fountains, for there are two of them. And unfortunately, it is quite the mystery still. However, the, the power contained within is unquestionable, and thus the role. You, you have my great thanks for refreshing my memory on this, and please do let me know when my name is featured on the role of prosperity. I, I will endeavor to do so. If you require further information uh, later on regarding the fountains, we might be able to arrange for something. Then I will wait, await your convenience to have such a conversation. Thank you again for your, your honesty and your discretion. Then we 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 end the call. Yeah. Okay, so Kufu, you now have secret knowledge that Sobek has absolutely no idea. Of. Uh, so, so, Sobek was in the room when I was having the conversation. Oh yeah, the, so, so that's oh, that's why I wanted it to be yeah, a conference yeah, yeah. call so we could hear it all. Yeah. So, so Sobek, entirely like you had no idea. Like not nothing sounds familiar to you at all about what she just See, said. I, I'm going to do something potentially very dangerous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to me personally, to my character uh, personally. I, I will pretend like, I did make you sound like an absolute baller in that conversation there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Sobek's <laughs> got it on lock. I, I, I'm just going to say. I know what I'm doing. But, because this, this, <laughs> this is what giving the DM something that could really, could really be interesting. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to I'm gonna contact the head of our, of our cult. Mm -hmm. The priest. Your, your guild? Bantanov? Yes. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Al cult, Alvarez. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Our cult. And. Yep. Being a scribe and being someone who's aware of keeping history and recording law and this sort of thing, so it's ingrained into me, even though my previous alchemist, right? I'm going to say to them, is I just want to contact you. I may previously have made an arrangement with our organization, our members, that if I ever suspected I have had my memory tampered with, or have knowledge that I should have and I do not. I may have made um, arrangements or a precaution. There may be something that you are meant to provide me in such an instance. Possibly a record or a item in such a instance. I, was, so, I don't expect the answer to that now, yes, because that might yeah. be something. Yeah. But there could be mm -hmm. something in there that's dangerous and juicy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it that stands would, to reason. I would, I would, I would ask that. Also, yeah. also I think we've just found the new tagline for our company: dangerous and juicy. Dangerous and juicy. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's <this> like <laughs> house of repose and restoration. Dangerous and juicy. I, I was just funerary service. <laughs> I'm carried to think like, how would my character, being what he is, deal with mm -hmm. memory? You know, yeah. suspecting he's maybe been tampered with, yeah. and he would have made precautions. Yeah. Thinking about it previously, so there may be something yeah. on record. Or... And that is that is entirely true, and that is also entirely up to you. If uh, Sobek's approach to the problem that all Arisen have is that you write things down for yourself, you're you're not the only one. Like scribes, yeah. that's their number one thing. Like when they realize I exactly. I'm losing so I the might, plot here. That's I might what have they a do. scribe that I only get access to if I ask for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if anybody yeah. become aware that I may need it, then that they they tell me of the secret thing. Otherwise, I won't. They don't mention mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Okay. So, there is a secret cache of your notes to yourself in the style of um, what's yeah. that movie with the mentor? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a there's Tattoos a there's a cache of notes from you to yourself that you will only be given access to. If you seem to need it, <laughs> yeah, that's why I thought yeah. it'd be kind of like what? 
<laughs> if I suspect something, I would probably put put something for me to help me in this yeah. situation. I, I love the yeah. thought that at some point in time, someone's going to discover your like notes and they're going to fictionalize it as interview with an arisen. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> they're they're going to get um, like Brad Pitt's uh, brother, uh, Dog Pitt, uh, of whom I learned a great deal entirely by accident the other day, and dude is thoroughly involved in. Um, all kinds of charity stuff, like humanitarian causes and whatnot. So, yeah, <laughs> turns out he's 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 a pretty baller guy. But that aside, um, uh, yeah, uh, interview with uh, with an arisen An interview with the mummy, <laughs> which um, which quite by coincidence, I know um, Anne Rice did a book called um, Ramesses, which mm -hmm. effectively that's what it is. Yeah, and I, I I've read that. I have, yeah. Interestingly, yeah. John, uh, you, you, you don't have to take this uh, piece of advice before, but I think for your case, you might have a spirit you contact in this instance. Well, we've kind of established already that the captain, the good captain, is kind of the touch point for Khufu. So right. he's, he's my boy. Yeah, but he's 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 on a bender. So he's <laughs> he's out pl plundering the Portuguese main or whatever. <laughs> yeah, he's not present, is what I'm saying. But we, we discussed that when we had the uh, single session with Khufu uh, and he, he met with the, the ghostly captain in in the tomb that it was it's, it's kind of a, a great touchstone for an arisen because the spirit, unless otherwise dealt with in the twilight, is also eternal and they don't have the memory problems that you do. So, yeah. Oh, also, that was one of my favorite interactions with an NPC where he was like, I'll give you this information if you get me like a body. Obviously, expected me to be like, No, no. And I was like, Yeah, right then. And he was like, Oh, what? <laughs> what? I've, I've got to admit, I didn't expect you to be quite so reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good times. So, yeah, uh, we've established that if, if you turn up uh, and you seem to need help, uh, there there might be help that comes your way okay so like i say drop yep. my vestige off at the tomb and integrate that yep yeah so the there's there's going to be some additional construction needed because you need to have a special pedestal built for the the, the football but yeah they, the cult gets on that uh, yeah and it will be integrated at, uh, according to your instructions yeah obviously advise them to make sure all of our relics are like doubly secure yeah, yeah, they post guards inside yeah. the tomb, like living guards. <laughs> and then, I think we're we're off to like the Deadwind Fountain, so uh, yeah. so that can get his feet wet in that sweet, sweet Deadwind. <laughs> Good stuff. So uh, let me bring up the details for this. I tell you, tell you what, though, Matthew, you want to have a look at like playing brothers? Because I'm not even going to argue that I should be the one to get it. Because I'm just like, no, it's fine. Your name's on it. Go for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't even, we don't even know what it does, John. I, I, I've got an inkling what it does. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you're like, oh, do you want it, Kufo? I'll be like, yeah, I'll splash around in the Deadwind Fountain. But, I mean, you can't spell Deadwind without dead, after all. <laughs> I just got thrown around by an MCAT, so... <laughs> That's it's it. something that makes me less... I'm thinking if anyone needs like a bit of a boost to like the spiritual like fortune after like the the incident you've had, and plus, you're a I know you're a scribe, so you're a bit of a stickler for the rules. Your name's on the roll, so true. I am a bit of a stickler when it comes to the, uh, you know, crossing the dot and the T's. No, that's, that was wrong around. <laughs> that's that's how it used to be back in the old days before they changed it. <laughs> I realized too late that I'd said that completely wrong. Okay, so well, when you said um, dot, dot, when you said crossing the eyes, you're obviously referring to like the eye sort of hieroglyphs that we had in ancient Iran, rather than the letter I. Excellent recovery there, John. Thank you for. Yep. Sorry, that's what I'm <laughs> here for. Saving my ass. Okay. If the so... MCAT's waiting there for me, you know, I'm, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to drive away. <laughs> this is like. I'm good. Well, I, I still got yeah. ten days, man. Like, <laughs> it's yeah. it's fine. No, so we we're we're gonna end there because we're running on a bit. So we we will cut to a night scene in uh, uh, in a very different milieu because we will be uh, 
we will have traveled to Morda Urca via the, the rail car. Um, and we will further have moved from there to Sugarloaf Mountain, Bao de Asukar, uh, uh, which is the Sugarloaf Mountain in Brazilian Portuguese. And let's see, do I have a pic? Oh, well, I have the, the picture that we saw before. Uh, locations. Yeah. So that's the view from Murda Urca. And Sugarloaf Mountain is the one in the distance and towards which the cables lead. So there, uh, not exactly at the highest point, but quite close, is where you saw the fountain of dead ones spring from the ground. The sort of golden tinted uh, fountain, uh, which turns into tender mist and drifts over the entire city uh, which also incidentally was the place where the Amkat in your your jungle experience uh, was spitting you think you, you've kind of concluded that it was uh, Sekem derived from Apep Medes that the creature was spitting into the fountain. And as it did, so uh, the fountain turned into um, acrid smoke and embers, and the smoke and the cinders within would then drift over uh, Rio, which we know that even Khufu in the physical world felt that something went wrong just now. <clears throat> but It was that, something that... weird, but I couldn't get to the bottom of it. Yeah. That, that was that what that we saw last time. However, you come here now and you see the same golden fountain spring from the ground and uh, turn into, into fine mist and drift down from the mountain. And uh, yeah, the, the sense of power is palpable in this place. Uh, Khufu, you can sense it as well. Uh, you can't exactly see it quite as well as Sobek because Sobek has the god sight affinity but you you feel it as well this is a place of power to be sure I, I will stand there respectfully and wait for Sobek to do his business I'm gonna guzzle down this magic <laughs> juice Ma magic juice magic juice from Sugarloaf Mountain <laughs> that's uh that's the episode title for this, I guess. So, yeah, it's a 20-foot-tall like geyser of, of luminescent energy. Uh, do you... What do you do, Sabak? Uh, I follow Khufu's instructions. He said that I need to walk into it. Mm -hmm. And that so is you, all. You do just that, and it's, it's nighttime now. It is, indeed, the wishing hour, and against the backdrop of the night sky on one side, like towards the, the sea. Uh, and on the other side, you have Rio with all its lights. Uh, you step into this geyser of uh, luminescent essence of potential, really. Um, you are engulfed in the power springing from the ground and you immediately uh, gain one dot or second. Oh. So you can put that down on your sheet. Oh. As you are suffused with power. And then uh, you need to roll your second rating to see if you can keep hold of it. Right. Okay. Much has happened when you drained the chains that held up at Meadows. However, this isn't this isn't bad. <laughs> that that was bad. This is not. This is just like can okay. your frame retain the second? Oh, so, um, I'm I not even. Get, I need to get high. Or, I can't remember this. Is this the one? Uh, you, no, you need sorry, to. I, I've messed that up. I've not even. Yeah, intelligence is second. Yeah. <laughs> uh... There we go. Okay, nice. so you succeeded in the roll, which means that uh, it it resets. It, you, you, your body doesn't retain the second, so you minus that one second that you just gained, but yeah. Yeah. your your descent is now reset. So 
you didn't get the point to carry with you, but the timer on when your second is drained further has been reset. So you have more time now you're at your current first. rating. Yeah. yeah. So you are refreshed uh, in the most fundamental sense that you, you can feel because Sekhem is what Jeez, animates stop. you. It's, it's your existence now. Mm-hmm. Um, so you are em- empowered, uh, even though you, you couldn't harvest the Sekhem itself, but your, um, your descent is slowed because of this. Okay. And, um, oh yeah, sorry, I, I meant to do a thing. Hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, that was uh, yeah. I, I I was I was checking a thing I meant to do before, uh, which might have benefited you, but it would have instead made things worse. But you already didn't get the point, so it doesn't matter. It could have gone easier for you, but it didn't because of chance. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Uh, you you get the reset to your schedule and uh, please roll three dice. Three, three D10. Okay. Uh, oh, I another one, don't I? Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, oh, Ooh, d- 12 D10. It's it's off the charts. <laughs> He's gonna blow. <laughs> yeah, run. Sorry, guys. And then that's my fat gaming fingers. Look at that. Sugarloaf yeah. just evaporates. <laughs> <laughs> Should I just roll that one again, or do you want to take the first? Yeah, just roll. Just roll one more. <laughs> Twelve. Yeah, there we go. Two successes, or two, or two, two successes or two failures, depending on which way this matters. <laughs> yeah, but you rolled two that were eight or above, right? No, so I got one ten, which I then have got an extra one. Yeah, yeah. So okay, three, yeah, two three successes. successes, two successes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, let me refer to this. No, 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 no. Mysterious rolls are the best kind of rolls. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There should be something on the sheet that just says roll this many d10s. Like they should just yeah, it's just like, like select how yeah, many. Yeah, it, it it just would be such a little convenience thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry, this is yet again a first <laughs> of of things. So I'm gonna have to look up a thing I thought was in. One book, and it's instead in another book. Okay, there we go. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, well, I had to look, and John, I was there. Uh, I, I, it took me a while to decide if I was going to tell the Red Spa or anything about our previous adventures. Still don't know if we can trust her. Well, yeah, we can't trust her, but I'm not sure if she's a. Uh, on the level in this particular like, scenario, if you know what I mean. She has some, some involvement. Well, I think a certain amount of caution is is wise, but at the end of the day, we we have to sort of act. If we if we sort of start second-guessing ourselves, we'd, we'd never act at all. We wouldn't accomplish anything. Exactly. You have to trust... Yeah. Uh, and, and obviously, obviously, as a as an arisen who's like, yes, action, let's go. Do I'd I'd, ra- I'd rather yeah. do something that find out I've made a mistake, and then I can try and sort that out, than like not take any action at all. Unless we've been breaking the law this entire time, then we're gonna have to figure that out. What if the Red Sparrow is using us to break one of the five laws? So that was a good result. So. That was yay, uh, and you you stand exultant in this undiluted uh, power, and um, it 
it shrinks as as you've absorbed the power and you can, you can witness the the gazer uh, retracting and and slowing its pace uh, until it doesn't spring from the ground the mist doesn't s- slide off the mountain it, it kind of dims a bit but it, yeah and it, it disappears entirely you you can't see it anymore uh which it, it tracks with what you've been told uh you you know it goes dormant when someone uses it and as as you watch the thing disappear uh you you look to kufu and you realize you you have no idea why you are on sugarloaf mountain you you don't know why you're here has kufu brought you here for some reason you don't know there's no reason for you to be here this is this is a mountain uh which yeah mountains are nice i guess but all knowledge and understanding of the fountains of mart has disappeared in in an instant from your your understanding and and memory well that's that's, that answers my next question (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so uh kufu you you see sobek a, a little bit bewildered <laughs> and and you you've been told it might be disorienting so maybe it was expected but uh sobek you you recall nothing related to the fountains at all you don't understand why you're here so i like to think as i'm escorting him away i'll sort of fill him in on the, the events yep. that he's missing from his memory and i'll explain okay. that i suspect yeah. it's a it's a a side effect of this mystical energy like washing over him. Yep. So Sobek, you are <laughs> informed as to why <laughs> you were on a mountain just now. Ooh, that's uh of course like if if makes sense if, yeah yeah. Yeah. Just I'm just kinda like at the moment. <laughs> like, yeah, the not, tracks. Yeah, yeah, that tracks. I don't have any objections because I don't have any point. Yeah, you don't. You don't know. You again. We we fall back to what we just discussed. You yeah. have to trust Kufu because otherwise, nothing works. It works. <laughs> but again, uh, that was that was very fortunate for you because Kufu was there to give you the answers, like straight up, like this is what happened. I but... <laughs> I, I, I do have a follow up question. Mm-hmm. My character won't even be aware of this at the moment. Mm-hmm. But I was carrying that little toy car with me. Mm-hmm. Which I should have thought about before I stepped into that thing. Mm-hmm. Does, does, it, does it absorb the power uh, as well? That if if you check it, it, it's it's fine. It's intact. Right, okay. Yep. I wasn't sure if I juiced it up and it had mm. gone boom. It's like, oh, <laughs> it's leveled up. <laughs> it's a toy car plus one. Excellent. So... Yeah, I guess we, we <laughs> cut away. I really don't know why I have a toy car on me. You you do know. You got it from Tesh for Gemma, but you That's you it. don't you don't know why you went to a mountain. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> good. So we, we cut away as the the twin brothers uh, journey down from uh, the Sugarloaf Mountain, having made use of the. Uh, fountain of Maat at the top and uh, discussing the intricacies and the fragility of arisen memory which we have now been given an, a like a very concrete lesson in just how fragile it is uh, with, with Sobek being struck entirely uh, without knowledge or understanding of the fountains just now and uh, we fade away into the night of Rio and uh, to to next time it's it's going to be carnival day uh, starting uh, with the great festival nice so we're looking forward to that but that that's that's it for now well thank you very much for running that I very much thank enjoyed you very it. Much. yep thanks thanks for playing All right i shall stop the stream here yep this should be a card return to sugar mountain